G'day, Lockie here, and for today's OSS unboxing, we're actually going to be doing more of an OSS revisit. Now, these projects in the open source communities are moving so fast, it's worth me taking a look at them every several months just to see what's uh, the latest, what new features are involved, and what new problems they're trying to tackle. And specifically, I'm looking at a project I reviewed several months ago called Gatekeeper, which allows you to do uh, policy control for Kubernetes. I will link that video in the description and throw it up on the screen here so you can click that if you want a more in-depth view of what Gatekeeper does. Today, I'm actually going to be looking at three new features that I think are super compelling in Gatekeeper. And if you pop over to the Gatekeeper GitHub repo, you should be able to download the latest release of Gatekeeper and play with these features yourself. Now, I'm going to keep this super short and sweet, just go through the new features, and we'll go from there. So if you remember back to that original video, you define constraint templates, which contain not only the rego, but a schema around them. And these are represented as custom resources on your Kubernetes cluster. You then implement those constraints um, using a, const uh, a constraint uh, you implement those templates, I should say, using a constraint. So the example that I have up here is a constraint template that says, hey, Kubernetes, we're going to uh, only allow you to use these container repos. And the nested rego that allows that policy is found down here. And we can see that we have this property here called repos, which is type array, and we have an item of strings. So here we're going to implement that constraint template with this constraint, which um, we're going to match all pods in the namespaces to and we're only going to allow them from the repos that uh, have this prefix Lachlan Evenson. So I'm going to go ahead and actually apply that constraint. So cube control apply. Right, so now that specific constraint is actually applied to this cluster. And I should mention I've actually just followed the deployment um, documentation here and deployed Gatekeeper to this cluster. So that's happened, now I have that constraint there. Now what I should be able to do is go ahead and create a pod, because remember we're only checking pods and we're gonna check this image name. So if I go and create this pod, we should actually now get an error message. Um, create nginx. Right, and of course we do. It's denied by this specific policy that we just created, and nginx uh, is not allowed. We're only allowed Lachlan Evenson. So that is indeed enforced. Now, one of the first things I want to show you is if we go and have a look at um, getcrds, let's take a look. We should see that we do have this constraint defined here. So if I interrogate that and do an output of YAML, Let's take a look. I'm going to make this full screen. We'll see a couple of things here. We should see any um, violations that we have down in the status field. And you can see that it is enforced and uh, it's set to true and there's no violations and there's no resources. So there's no resources in the default namespace currently violating this policy. Now this is of course exactly what I showed in the initial video which everything is enforced. Now imagine a world where you actually have a brown field cluster. So you have a cluster with resources already deployed and you want to create these policies and see what's out of inf uh, out of compliance and then bring those things back into compliance before you start enforcing them. That's exactly what dry run is for. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pop back to VS Code here, have a look at my constraint, and I'm actually going to set the enforcement action. I'm going to update it. The default obviously is, as we can see here, is enforced as true. We're not. We're going to update this to have an enforcement action of dry run right now. Okay, cube control create dash f. Actually, I'm going to do an apply because it already exists. That constraint. So that should take a moment to get updated. Now then if we try and recreate that Nginx pod, it should succeed, but we should be able to track it that it's out of compliance using Gatekeeper. So if I'd created this prior to actually installing this specific constraint, constraint with the dry run, so let's go back and have a look. Oh, I haven't created that pod yet. Cube control get pods, we don't have it. Cube control create. Um, Nginx. So now it's actually in dry run, meaning it's not going to enforce, it will allow, but it'll also give me a status that it's out of compliance. So now that's created. If I can type pods, I cannot. There we go. It's created. And we're going to go back and look at the status field of that constraint that we defined. Okay, now we can see 
violations, and we have this enforcement action set to dry run. And the kind is a pod, and this is actually out of compliance. So we're dry running, it's not allowed. We allow it on the cluster. Now I can actually look and get the status and say, oh, this is out of compliance. It is my job then to go and fix that. And then I can enforce it again. So let's try something a little different here. Actually, what we can do is I would be able to go and fix this pod. We will delete. If I was to go and enforce this, it would never get created um, if it was deleted and recreated. So I'm going to delete this pod right now. Okay, I'm going to remove that, setting it back to the default action, which is in force. And if I apply that constraint again, and give it a moment, it will be updated. Then I can re, uh, retest here. All right. Create Nginx. Okay, so that again is blocked. Um, and if we go and take a look here, see that we actually have nothing out of compliance now. Excellent. And we have no total violations as well because we just updated that. So we would actually see a violation um, update. Let's do a quick check. It would tell me the total number of violations if I had one on this cluster. We should have seen that before if I went back and actually showed you that again. Let's, let's go back and, and just for posterity here, set the enforcement action to dry run and reapply that constraint. And assuming that's actually hit, we should be able to create the pod. And once it actually does a check and a sync, we should see that that pod is out of compliance. Just make sure that's running, it started. It syncs in a loop to check for the total violation, so that should happen pretty quickly in maybe the next 30 seconds. So that is the big one. I think dry run is absolutely awesome, allowing you to create and define policies, see what's out of compliance, bring it into compliance, then flip it to enforcement or the inverse is also true. The other thing that I'm trying to show is total violations. So we're getting some interesting metrics about how many violations there's actually been against this specific policy. So we have one here. This is the total number of violations. We can see how many resources are out of, uh, of compliance with this stated policy. We have one currently right now that's out of compliance. I should, I, in the actually I won't do it now, but in the initial video I actually showed a, a, a valid create here, so if I change this um, container to have that prefix there, it would uh, of course be created and allowed by Gatekeeper. So that's cool. Finally, um, if we pop back over, what, they're actually publishing metrics. So we can actually see there's a whole bunch of Gatekeeper metrics here now. So these are super cool. We can execute these. We can look at how many total constraints there are, and obviously we created it and deleted them and updated them. So uh, you can see over here on the right that the action goes from red, which is deny, to dry run. And that's me flipping back and forth between the two different ones. We can look at the total number of violations. So we only have one violation currently. If I had more pods that were violating this rule, you would obviously see more there. And I think request count. This is another good one. So we can see here are the number of denies, that's set to one, and here's the, the allows. Obviously, Kubernetes is constantly um, making requests, and this count is constantly going up as those requests are being made. So metrics has been embedded into Gatekeeper as well, and we can track not only the total constraints, the total violations, what state they're in, whether they're in deny or dry run, and the total allows of, uh, and denies that we have. So now this is giving you really cool visibility into your policy engine and how that's actually affecting the workloads that are being deployed to Kubernetes. So they are the three features, just to summarize, dry run, so you can create constraints and have them in dry run, which means they're not enforced, but you get the status. You can look at how many total violations you have and you can bring them back into compliance. Super cool, total violations, dry run, I recommend you check it out. And then finally, the third one that we took a look at is there's metrics now published on Gatekeeper. So if you have a Prometheus, you can go and scrape your Gatekeeper endpoint and get really rich 
which metrics out of a total number of violations, what state the policy is in, total number of allows, which is great visibility into how Gatekeeper is operating and how the policy uh, is being enforced against your cluster. So I encourage you to go check out Gatekeeper. It's a great project if you're interested in solving problems and questions like making sure that um, all my containers have limits, making sure that my pods are only opening specific ports, only coming from specific container repositories. Gatekeeper is a great... Um, a CNCF project under the Open Policy Agent banner uh, that you can go and try out today if you're looking at solving uh, policy in Kubernetes. And that's it for today, and thanks for joining us.